So, um, good to see you all. Um, we've got through our three-day program, and here we are at the final session, the closing conversation. And I've assembled on my stage here a group of seven lovely people to have a conversation with. So I'm, I know they've got things to say, and I'm hoping that you have things to say as well. Um, what's going to happen is that I'm going to get them to introduce themselves um, one by one as they make their opening remarks, and then we'll open the um, conversation up to the floor. And then at the very end, I think I'm going to ask Kate Geary here to wrap the whole thing up with, uh, with uh, as it were, some last words before we all head off home. Um, if you've got your printed programme in front of you and you're looking along the line of people sitting here and thinking you don't recognise some people and where's so-and-so, um, unfortunately, there have been some late changes, people not available, and, and therefore a certain amount of, of um, juggling has gone on. So Tess Gale and, and Jeanette Plummer-Squires, neither of them are able to be here, unfortunately. Um, but um, we do have um, some excellent substitutes for you. So we have um, in their place Phil Pollard and uh, Sakshi Sarana. So um, what I'm going to do, I will start um, with, with Kate Geary. Um, I'll get her to make her opening remarks. We'll then give roughly five minutes each to um, the other six panel members to speak, and then we'll open up to the floor. Okay, Kate. Brilliant. Thank you, Stephen. And so I'm Kate Geary. I'm Head of Professional Development and Practice at CIFA, um, and I get the, the, uh, the privilege and slightly nerve-wracking job of, of going first in reflecting a little bit on what I've heard over the course of the conference and particularly thinking about the theme of the conference about sustainable futures. And I don't know whether um, you can see the title behind our heads here. I would sort of assumed that everybody was as short as me and that you'd be able to see um, that on the screen, but particularly thinking about um, a sustainable profession. So I think the first thing that I just wanted to observe is that it's been lovely to just observe the simple delight of people seeing each other again. Um, and I know we met in person last year in Bath, um, but it has been a great pleasure to step outside of our Zoom squares and our team boxes um, that we mainly inhabit these days um, and actually um, see each other in person. And for those of you who are watching this through a Zoom um, box or a team square, just imagine that later on this evening when I've missed my six minute connection at Tamworth and have got an hour's delay to get home, you'll be starting your Friday evenings and we'll have the last laugh. I think it's probably fair to say that at times we are a fractious and argumentative profession, so it has been lovely to, to, to find joy in each other's company again. Um, and I think if we're going to continue to be a sustainable profession, I hope that we can continue to find that joy in each other's company as we get more used to that face-to-face -face interaction. So going back to the theme of, of sustainability, we can choose to act in ways that are sustainable and we can choose to act in ways that aren't sustainable. And Hannah um, posed the challenge to us, albeit remotely in the opening address, of what will you do to act more sustainably? And I'm sorry, I'm going to talk in cliches for a little bit. For something to be sustained, it must be valued. Um, and so I think that's one of the key points that I want to take away from this. And for those of you who were in the um, communication session looking at key messages, you will know if you were paying attention that archaeology creates value for business and society. And to maximise that value, it needs to be carried out with professionalism. Is that all right, Pete? So, I mean, that obviously starts with um, the historic environment being valued. We know that as our home, as our habitat, and for what it contributes to society. And obviously, we need to understand the values that individuals and communities across the world place on their historic environment and understand that those values and the value systems that they derive from might be different to ours. And that was something that Leo um, very eloquently explained um, in the session on archaeological ethics. hadn't anticipated the complications of turning a page and holding a microphone at the same time. Um, 
And we need to communicate that value. And I've mentioned the communication session, the key messages session to our clients, our stakeholders, governments and decision makers, and communicate in their language as framework and the frameworks that are relevant to them. And particularly, um, and um, Ben flagged up the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals at the beginning of the session, um, and that they provide us with a framework for, for, for um, framing some of that, that, that conversation. And I also thought very much we need to value ourselves as technically skilled and ethically competent professionals aligned around a shared vision and a shared sense of purpose. And that was something that we started to explore again in the, in the ethics session and particularly thinking about that consultation on CIFA's code of conduct. And this is another plug to encourage you all to respond to that, that consultation. Um, we will get the ethical code that we, that we create, that we choose to create um, through that process. And obviously part of that is valuing the contributions that we make, um, whether that's to the economy, whether that's to knowledge and understanding, whether that's to well-being, and particularly around the theme of this conference, the contribution that archaeologists make to the climate um, emergency, the, the, the responses to the climate emergency, and supporting communities to understand the changes that are happening in front of their eyes within their own communities at the moment. Um, and I particularly wanted to draw attention to the, the, the resources that are being developed by Dan Miles and his team at Historic England to support us as archaeologists to, to help in that work and to um, minimise our own carbon footprints and work more sustainably. And of course, we need to value each other as we move towards a more diverse, inclusive and accessible profession understanding what different individuals need to feel valued and supported in their engagement with archaeology and the historic environment. And it's particularly sobering. I hope all of you got a chance to um, visit the Archaeosexism exhibition. Um, it's particularly sobering to think that although progress is being made, the comments and the reactions that that exhibition um, have promoted uh, show us that, that harassment and sexism are still rife within our workplaces and we can't consider ourselves to be a sustainable profession while that's still the case and i thought one thing that came out very strongly in the session um, on wednesday afternoon about sustainable futures is the challenges we face um as a as a discipline, as a profession, and actually the, the challenges that society faces at the, are immense and daunting. Um, but numerous speakers have observed that archaeologists have the skill set, the behaviours, the mindset to respond to them, not just for ourselves, but to help society navigate those challenges that the coming years and decades are going to bring. Um, and now more than ever, the world needs archaeologists. It needs you. The ethics session reflected on the fact that CIFA's code of conduct is 40 years old and essentially reflects the concerns of an emerging profession back in the early 1980s, which made me think that the last 40 years have been characterised really by emerging professional structures, increased commercialism, developing business practices and expertise and competition. Um, and again, I don't think it's unfair to say that um, we have seen our institutions and our, our companies and our businesses over the last um, four decades jostling for position sometimes, competing for audiences, competing for relevance, members, position and influence, justifying their ex existences. And it, I wanted to just reflect on the fact that, that if we're going to grow and sustain our profession over the next 40 years, we need to change that focus and prioritise behaviours around cooperation, co-creation and collaboration, actively seeking ways that we can work together across um, disciplinary boundaries, across institutional boundaries and across national boundaries to find solutions to the issues that we face. And we do have to confront the issue of pay in archaeology. It's the elephant in the room if I don't mention it and how we value and reward our people the sustainability of our profession is dependent on our ability to provide sustainable and equitable careers. We can't move forward um, without tackling that. And I really wanted to focus, shift the focus from working out whose fault that is and who we need to blame and point fingers at, which is acrimonious and it's divisive and it's quite often just a waste of time to working together on solutions that work for all of us. And 
which made me think for a profession that can work out a finer detail of how humans have interacted with their environment over time and space from some bits of pot and bone and different coloured soil, it can't be beyond our capacity to sort this out. Um, in our session on Wednesday afternoon on sustainable futures, we asked for a show of hands um, from the audience to see who, how many people thought that the, the structures and the institutions that we have in place now are capable of rising to the challenge that we face over the coming years. And I think about two thirds thought that they were, and a third thought that they weren't and needed completely reforming. Um, and that's what I'd like to throw out then, is, is the challenge, is that a mindset reform or is it completely a structural reform? But I wanted to end on a positive note because I'm, I'm an optimist and I genuinely believe that we do have the, the, the skill sets, the mindsets, um, we can overcome structural issues um, and work collaboratively together um, to, to create that sustainable um, profession that this conference is, uh, is hoping to achieve. Thank you. <laughs>